Hey guys, um, glad to have you back. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I have a new special. Um, I will feature some of the highlights of Peter Milligan's work, uh, some uh, favorite books uh, and graphic novels and series um, that I that I like. Uh, I know he's like. He's not the big league author. He's no uh, Alan Moore or Warren Ellis or Grant Morrison, but uh, he used to be my favorite uh, Vertigo writer for a very long time. And I want to show you why. I think he's a very talented guy um, who doesn't work really well in the American um, superhero oriented market because his themes are a bit more off and unlike Grant Morrison, who could adapt very well um, to the more superhero-based storytelling vehicles. Peter Milligan stayed British uh, more than any other uh, author in the American market. At least, this is my humble opinion. And I will uh, kick off the whole thing with um, the series that started all for me, um, Shape the Changing Man. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are only the first three volumes available. Um, after those, you have to get the single issues. They're pretty cheap. You can get them from, from dollar bins and, and, and whatnot. So it shouldn't be impossible. And I hope that in some time in the future, we will get an omnibus or some kind of collected edition uh, for this fantastic series. What is it about? Well, um, I will I will show you a few um, a little bit of the artwork. It's nothing super special, uh, you know. It's like late eighties, early nineties, quite conventional, but very capable art um, by Chris Beckelow. Um Of course, this is not the Chris Beckelow that you know from X Men. Uh, it's the Chris Beckelow that just started out. Um, so it's it. It may be interesting to see how he how he evolved. I always liked his art in Shade, but I didn't like his art later on. So there are different tastes. But let's return to the content. Um, this is about a guy who he's from. You could say he's an alien. Uh, it, it's never. At least I can't remember that it was cleared up. Well, where he's really from. It's a other dimension called Meta. And um, he comes to Earth and uh, he changes bodies. Um, he needs a body, he needs a host. Uh, and the host that he picks is not a very good one. It's one of a serial killer. Um, and he tries to cope with him now being human. And the only person who believes his crazy story that he's from another dimension is the daughter of uh, his last victims that he killed. Uh, so he's in a very awkward situation, uh, especially since he falls hard for this girl, for Kathy. And, and this is what the comic is about, for me at the least. Uh, this is a romance comic. It's, it's, I think, 60 whatever or 70 issues uh, of, um, of a love story between uh, Shade and Kathy. And later on, um, I don't think it's in the first three volumes, or I'm not sure though, uh, it's been a while since I read them. Uh, there, will, there, is another, uh, there is another girl coming in, so it's a menage a trois. Um, but, you know, when, when it was initially released, I was obviously younger than today, so I was more, um, you know, touched by those kind of uh, romantic stories. But even today, I think this is something that is really missing. We have so many horror books and science fiction books and, of course, superhero shit. But where is the love? Really? I mean, where is the author who writes mainly about love and human relationships? Not about families. I mean, passionate love. And this is a passionate comic. It's a crazy comic. And Milligan can do this kind of thing very, very well. I really like his dialogues, um, his, um, you can really feel the, you know, the, 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 the people that are burning for each other. And, and this is what I really like about him. Um, so there's Shade the Changing Man. Um, 
I think I, I read the first volume, I reread it, and I think it holds up pretty neatly. Um, so I can totally recommend it. Now, the last thing that I read by Peter Milligan, almost the last thing, it was The Names. Um, it's a um, longer uh, miniseries, I think 10 issues or 8 issues. And uh, well, what is it about? Um, it's not super easy to explain. Um, it's mainly about high finance and algorithms and um, I would call it a capitalist conspiracy comic um, uh, in that um, a young hero finds uh, something out about how the whole system, the whole uh, financial system is rigged and she tries to to fight it. Um, there is a murder, so you have like a mix of um, um, a thriller, um, um, there, there are horror elements in it, there is a science fiction element to it, so it's really hard to classify. Um, on the back cover, uh, there is a pretty good mm, a summary. You can read it. It's money, power, sex. So this is also like the power and sex, and especially sex, is something that Peter Milligan is always interested in. Uh, and this is why I'm interested in Peter Milligan. So. Uh, the names I recommend it. I know it didn't get the biggest, um, the greatest reviews, and the um, the end of the of the story wasn't super fulfilling. But it was so entertaining to read. So I don't care. I don't care about plot reveals and and stuff like that. I want to be entertained while I'm reading it, not in the last two pages. So, yeah. Um, Let's continue with Screamer. Uh, this is an older work um, of Milligan and Brett Ewens. Uh, I think he died recently. Uh, a great artist. For me, a quintessential, um, you know, early 90s, late 80s, major readers uh, title style. And, and I, I mean this in the best way. Um, it's clean. Um, you have facial, facial expressions. You have um, you have great art. You know, Steve Dillon is a little bit. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. It's uh, Brett Ewens and Steve Dillon because those faces looked so much like Steve Dillon. So I wanted to say Steve Dillon was influenced by him, but it's um, it's a Steve Dillon original. So Steve Dillon, of course, of Preacher and Punisher. What is the screamer about? Um, well. It's basically, um, the setting is, um, it's a futuristic alternative reality setting um, where, um, you know, different gangs or different families, a bit, a bit like Lazarus, different families have split up um, the city in between them. And um, the, so it's basically, it's a mafia comic if you want, but it's very much also about class and, and class warfare and uh, about growing up um, surrounded by violence and how, how this will turn out, how this will influence your uh, development. Um, so it's a really, it's a major reader's book and this is a kind of a, a, kind of a book that it, it has become super rare nowadays. This is like Vertigo at its best, I think. Um, and it was also like in, released in the early days of Vertigo. Um, well, if you like this kind of more bleakish, violent kind of stories like Clockwork Orange or Dark Knight Returns or whatever, so you could give this a uh, shot. Um, I liked it very much. I read it for the first time just like last year and I enjoyed it very much. So on to the next one. This is Hellblazer. I know um, for Hellblazer fans, this is a red flag. Uh, everyone, basically everyone hated his run on Hellblazer. Um, at least the guys who read like the 250 uh, issues of it before, I didn't. I, I have some volumes of Hellblazer. I read it um, when Garth Ennis wrote it back in the day. Um, but I bought it because uh, Shades of Changing Man has a guest appearance on this, uh, which is not super good, I have to say. Uh, but I enjoyed it very much. I know it's not the same uh, Constantine that that was shown before in, in Hellblazer. It's not, um, it's not like this super, super serious, super cynical guy. Uh, this is more like um, a midlife crisis Hellblazer. 
uh, who has a, a young girlfriend and does crazy stuff and um, it's, it's a bit over the top um, the art is nice nothing super special um, but I really liked it it's fun it's just fun and this is what Peter Milligan excels at if he's good then he's just fun to read it's just yeah you can enjoy it and uh, and don't think too much about it but it's clever at the same time you know when you're finished with it you're wondering wow th this is really well uh, thought out it has so many layers of meanings and everything but it's not like um, it has to to show how clever it is all the time it's entertaining one of the most if not the most entertaining um, work by Peter Milligan has to be Ecstatics, which started out as X-Force. Um, I think many of you have heard of it or even read it. Uh, this is the Omnibus edition that I have here. Uh, it's drawn by uh, Mike Oret, which is always a big, big win, I think. Um, and yeah, I mean, the art is, is of course super fun. It's pop arty. Um, he, I think Mike Orrett draws exactly the women that Peter Milligan writes. Um, they're always, um, it's really hard to pinpoint it. Um, they have this naivete and cleverness at the same time. Um, and it's so much fun to read this. Um, I I read a few of the issues when it came out, but I just when I just when I bought the omnibus, I finished the whole thing, and it's also like very touching. What is it about? It's like a it's a superhero sat satire, um, and it deals with um, fame hungry superheroes. Um, if you think about it, it's a very uh, and great modern take on superheroes, like. Watchmen was in the 80s where it's about political superheroes. How would superheroes be behave or you being used in a political real political setting? And this is how would superheroes be like in a mass media gossip um, obsessed um, World like like it is nowadays, but this is like 10 years old, but I mean you know, the mass media thing started back then, reality shows, shit like that. And this is like, um, this is like a superhero reality show. Um, and, um, and, and the superhero as a brand. This is a whole new concept. And, and I know it was, a lot of people have done it after, after Milligan, but I think no one really nailed it as much as he did. Maybe for Grant Morrison and Multiversity, there was one issue there where, um, it was also very well done. Um, well, what can I say other than please read this? It's super much fun. Um, you won't be let down by this. Uh, it's super cool. It's, it's well drawn. You can get the Omnibus. I think it was clearance recently. I think you can really get it for a good price. And it's very well invested, in my opinion. And now for uh, the last one, this is Enigma. This might be one of Peter Milligan's, if not the most well-regarded um, work. Uh, he did it with uh, Duncan Figueredo. Uh, it's also from the late 80s, early 90s. I guess 91, let's see. Oh, it's 93. Um, and it's basically a, a, a f a meta postmodern kind of thing where um, a young man meets the hero um, of his childhood. Uh, it's he meets um, a fictional character, um, which steps out of a comic that he loved, and uh, it's it's a coming of age and self discovery uh, story, uh, which laid ground for what became like the Vertigo trademark, um, mature reader stories, psychological stories. And uh, you know, this is what we're missing nowadays. I think we have image. I know we have a lot of super entertaining stuff, but it's, it's not very subtle stuff. It's really 
in your face stuff and then of course you have graphic novels uh, which are um, have their own quality but why not have something in between why not just have a major readers uh, series um, like like shade was or, or ecstatics was um, so um, yeah that's that's what I like about Milligan to sum it up he's um, his psychology is interesting and um, his um, depiction of love and passion is very it's it's very authentic and it's fun to read um, and he doesn't shy away from from those more sexual topics that are quite taboo especially in American comics um, of course he wrote a lot of shitty superhero comics don't read those please stick to the good stuff uh, and then you will have a lot of fun with Peter Milligan thanks for watching guys you can subscribe my channel uh, right here and um, I will be back probably next week until then have a good life thank you very much